Let's take a look at some of Firefox 86's new features, because despite how dead this browser might seem to be just from its market share numbers, and the fact that Mozilla is getting most of their funding from Google, one of their main competitors, Mozilla is still making new releases, and some of the stuff that is in this browser is actually pretty good, at least I thought that it was good enough for me to update my Firefox binary. Maybe I'll end up compiling it as well if I'm wowed enough by the new features. Uh, so anyway, one of the new features is that you can load multiple videos in picture-in-picture -picture mode. So, of course, before it was just one, uh, but you can do multiple. And um, it might look a little weird on my system because I'm using a tiling window manager, but of course it's going to look however it's supposed to look on yours. So yeah, we can get one, two, three, as many penguin videos as you want. But, you know, who really needs more than three at once? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. But let's look at uh, some, of the, some of the privacy features, some of the good stuff in there. Go ahead and pause all these penguins. Um, so, you've got total cookie protection added into Firefox now uh, in strict mode. So, basically, websites are going to have their cookies separated from one another. And Firefox is going to try to prevent things like super cookies from being stored to avoid cross-site cookie tracking. Now, if you don't know about cookies, that probably sounds like a bunch of gibberish, but basically cookies get stored on your computer by sites that you go to, and it saves some information about your session on that website. So say, for example, you are browsing an online store and you put some items into your cart, Cookies are going to allow for those items to still be in your cart when you pull the browser up later. Uh, they're also responsible for things like auto-filling forms, you know, names, addresses, credit card info, etc. cetera. Uh, and like so many other pieces of technology that were created to be convenient for you, this tech can also be used to track you across all of the sites that you go to. So now, if you enable this tracking protection, it's going to uh, basically work like this little graphic here. So instead of Facebook seeing all these different accounts that are associated with the same person, it's going to appear uh, that they are separate, that they're being accessed from different browsers. Uh, well, not necessarily different browsers, but they're just not all gonna be mixed together. Now, this feature isn't necessarily brand new. Uh, it's been possible to pretty much do the same thing with add-ons like Firefox's multi-account containers, which lets you keep all of your accounts, activities, and cookies that are associated with them separate. Now, don't confuse this with different profiles, right? That works a little bit differently because different browser profiles also separate your settings, your add-ons, your bookmarks, and your histories. Containers, they actually allow you to have different accounts and different sessions within the same profile on different tabs, and they just won't know about one another. So for example, you might have a YouTube account uh, or even just a container. So you don't actually need to have an account with YouTube to do this, but you can have a YouTube session where you do nothing but watch videos about ducks. You know, that's what this session is dedicated to. And then maybe you have another one where you do nothing but watch TikTok cringe videos. And this is going to keep the recommendation separate because if you watch TikTok on the duck viewing container, then you're gonna end up with silly stuff like, I guess, TikTok girls doing duck lip videos. You don't want that. You wanna watch regular ducks. Now there's also various security fixes that come with this release of Firefox. So if you don't upgrade for any other reason, like maybe you don't care about these new features, you should at least upgrade because most of these kind of have a high impact rating. So, you know, a few fixes with the content security policy. Um, there's some moderate fixes for Firefox on Android. So you wanna make sure that you update on all of your different platforms, you know, cause some of these are specific to the Android platform. Um, things like malicious applications, being able to read data from your Android's application directories. So obviously that's something that you don't want happening. Um, there were some memory safety bugs that were fixed. And there's also the dropping of DTLS 1.0 for establishing WebRTC's peer connections. So from Firefox 86 onwards, um, you know, DTLS 1.0, it's not gonna be supported. Any applications that are still using it are gonna need to be updated. Although you really shouldn't be using 
applications that are using that version of DTLS anyway. They should be using version 1.3 or at least version 1.2, which is gonna be the new minimum uh, version that's allowed in Firefox. And there's also supposed to be some significant stability and performance improvements that are gained by moving Canvas drawing and WebGL drawing to the GPU process. Now this could be pretty significant for people that spend a lot of time on the mainstream modern internet because as I've stated in the past, multiple times the web is moving in a general direction of bloat. So really technology in general is moving in this general direction of bloat because as the technology improves, people are able to have bloated applications and you know bloated websites that at least work good enough for people to actually accept them. Like most people, they have internet and computers with decent enough specs to load all of the bloat of most modern web pages. But having that handled by the GPU, that could at least save some CPU resources when those are limited. Uh, I think most people are using computers, at least if they're using desktops, they'll have GPUs in them this day, these days. Uh, now, unfortunately, I didn't see any difference in the pre-compiled Gen 2 binary compared to my older home compiled version. So I might just end up compiling this version of Firefox just to see if I can notice any differences there because that's something that I'm kind of interested in. But anyway, that's it for this review of Firefox. I'll leave a link in the release notes uh, or a link to the release notes in the description for you so that you can check everything else out. Uh, and let me know in the comments below what your new favorite Firefox feature is.